Now let's go and talk about some other ways people are protesting. We go to Turkey now out of Reuters. Police arrest dozens in raids across Turkey after protest. Police raided addresses across Turkey on Tuesday and detained dozens of people after nearly three weeks of anti-government protests, the local media reported. Turkey has been rocked by demonstrations that begin in and around Istanbul's Taskum Square that turned violent after police sought to clear protesters using tear gas and water cannons. Why were the protesters there in the first place? Does anybody ever ask that? Does, is that even in this article? No, it's not. Basically, these developers wanted to come in and cut down a bunch of trees in Taskum Square. And a bunch of people said, you know what? We don't want you to cut down these trees. These are protests that are happening everywhere. There was one in Germany a few years ago where these people said, no, we like this 100-year-old forest. We want to keep it. And they chained themselves to the trees and, and had to sit there and fight it out with these loggers. I'm not saying it should be like that everywhere, but this is a public place. This is not private property. So the people have a right to say what they want to do with their public spaces. Uh, Prime Minister Tayyip Erdogan uh, said in a speech on Sunday before hundreds of thousands of protesters in Istanbul that the disturbances have been manipulated by terrorists. I would say different. They're manipulated by police using tear gas and water cannons on people who weren't being violent, on people who were just stating their opinion. And when they started beating them with batons and shooting rubber bullets at them and hitting them with tear gas and water cannons, well, they reacted. And that's the reaction that police brutality usually gets. People usually do start turning violent when you start hitting them with a stick. They don't like that. But in a turn of events, uh, out of The Guardian, Turkish man inspires hundreds with silent vigil in Taskum Square. This guy, this is what he's doing. This is the way to do it. You stand up against the machinery and you refuse to comply. Erdem Gundas, dubbed the standing man, stages eight hour vigil and is joined by 300 people during a silent protest. A Turkish man has staged an eight-hour silent vigil in Istanbul's Taskum Square, the scene of the violent clashes between police and anti-government protesters in recent weeks, inspiring hundreds of others to follow his lead. By 2 a.m. on Tuesday, when the police moved in, about 300 people had joined him. Ten people who refused to be moved on by police were detained. But that's what you have to do. Sometimes it takes a detention. Sometimes it takes getting arrested for standing up for what you believe in. And especially as long as you're nonviolent, you're going to be in the right. In the end, the people will be with you. Now we see this going on across the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, going into Brazil. From the New York Times, thousands gather for protest in Brazil's largest city. Protesters showed up uh, by the thousands in Brazil's largest city on Monday night in a remarkable display of strength for the agitation that began with small protests against bus fare increases, then evolved into a broader movement by groups and individuals irate over a range of issues, including the country's high cost of living and lavish new stadium projects. That's what happens when you have socialist government. You get lots of stuff for the rich people and not a lot for anybody else. But they don't tell you that when they're selling it to you. They tell you everybody's going to get a little slice of the pie. Yeah, you're going to get a slice of the pie that you can't even see. It's smaller than that. The demonstrations in Brazil intensified after what? A harsh police crackdown. Last week stunned many citizens. In images shared widely on social media, the police here were seen beating unarmed protesters with batons and dispersing crowds by firing rubber bullets and tear gas into their midst. We actually have some video of that that we can go to. And this is kind of what happens. When police start beating up people who are being peaceful protesters, they get irate. And when you start sharing those images across social media, well, they're going to get more irate, which is going to lead to more police crackdowns, which is what's happening in Turkey. But isn't it interesting how you have two different countries on two different sides of the planet. Both have harsh police crackdowns when they're staging protests, and the protests get bigger and turn into riots. This is coming to the United States, okay? You may not see it now, but this right here, this is what's coming. In fact, if you were in Pennsylvania, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in uh, September of 2009, you saw pretty much the same thing, except they weren't shooting rubber bullets at us. They were just firing tear gas and using sonic weapons. But this is coming to the USA, mark my words. This is what's going to happen as long as we let the people, the, the bureaucrats, stay out of control and stay corrupt. Moving on to one of our final stories, this is out of ABC. NSA leaker, leaker Ed, Edward Snowden, I'm no Chinese spy. The 29-year-old former NSA contractor made the quip during an online question and answer session hosted by The Guardian. He said that the U.S. calling him a Chinese spy is a predictable spear, smear meant to distract from the issue of U.S. government misconduct. And that's what happens. You attack the messenger. 
You don't go, hey, maybe we should look at the NSA and why they're spying on millions of people without a warrant and no due process. No, no, no. We're going to attack the guy that actually came out and said it. He said, I've had no contact with the Chinese government. I only work with journalists. Here's what President Obama had to say about this and also uh, Snowden's comment on what Dick Cheney said about him being a traitor. Should he be prosecuted? Uh, I'm not going to comment on prosecution. Okay. He, uh, the, the case has been referred to the DOJ for criminal investigation. I'll and possible up. extradition. Snowden denied he was a spy and said being called a traitor by former Vice President Dick Cheney over the weekend was the highest honor you can give an American. The highest honor you could get being called a traitor by Dick Cheney, who is a traitor and who should leave this country. Actually, he should stand trial for the war crimes, especially his involvement in the stand down in 9-11, amongst other things. But that'll never happen because Dick Cheney is privileged and you're not. I got one final article, and this was brought to me by my son last night. He came up to me and said, Dad, there's a lake in Pflugerville, and they found a barrel of toxic waste in it. It was actually labeled hazardous waste. They pulled a 55-gallon barrel that was discovered uh, in Lake Pflugerville, which is, um, that is the water supply for Pflugerville. They get their water from there. The reason I bring up a local article about, you know, the local water supply is there's one thing you can do to make sure you're getting healthy water, and that is to get a ProPure system. I told my son, hey, we have a ProPure system at our house. Yes, we're pouring tap water in, but you know what? Anything bad in there is getting filtered out. Now, I don't know if it's going to filter out hazardous waste. It doesn't look like that's going to be a problem, but it prompted him to be concerned. He, he saw that on the news, and he, he said, Dad, Dad, I'm worried. You know, they said they found a white barrel and it had something on it. He wasn't sure. You know, he doesn't know what hazardous waste means. But he said there was something on it, and they said it was bad and that they were analyzing it, but they weren't sure if it broke open and if it contaminated the water supply. Well, by having a ProPure system, you're going to be better off than most people. Say there's a, a contamination of algae, which happens in, in some water supplies. Say they put too much fluoride in or put too much chlorine in. Or, God forbid, there's some sort of like natural gas or, uh, or, or gasoline that gets into the water supply. Sometimes this stuff does not get filtered out. In addition to all the other stuff, uh, the ProPure filters also filter out the pharmaceutical products, all the other crap that gets into our water supply from people using Big Pharma's system. So I encourage you, if you're out there and you haven't got one yet, do get the ProPure system. We are now offering 10% uh, off, which we have been offering this for a while, with uh, promo code WATER. So be sure you do get one. And we end tonight with the quote of the day from our president back in the 50s, Dwight D. Eisenhower. I don't know the number he was, but I know he was like 50 to 54. If you want total security, go to prison. There you're fed, clothed, given medical care, and so on. The only thing lacking is dot, 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 freedom. That's right. You want total security, go to prison. Because you're not going to get it anywhere else in life. Democrats will have you believe otherwise. They have you believe there's TSA agents everywhere sticking their hands down your pants. We'll all be safe, but that's not the case. If you're watching this on YouTube, please consider becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. It's very easy to do. All you go is to PrisonPlanet.tv. We have a 15-day free trial, and you can share your username and password with up to 11 other people. So do that today. If you're watching this on YouTube, support the show, support the broadcast. It supports everything we're doing here. It supports building new studios. It supports flying people here. It supports getting the word out. And then you could go on and use uh, Prison Planet as your own resource. You can grab videos. You can make your own videos. You can download the movies. You can download uh, Alex Jones' radio show. I mean, we have it all there, the rants, the e-books. Everything is there for you, prisonplanet.tv. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now will remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because Today, we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's 
convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid.